welcome everybody to um, the Jamstack meetup. So um, <clears throat> just in case you don't know it, I also run a website. I've been doing this um, since 2013, 2014. I run a website called thenewdynamic.org. Um, this meetup used to be called The New Dynamic, which I'll get into in a little bit. But um, so the website itself um, is full of links out to blog posts around the web. Um, uh, there's a database of tools within the ecosystem, a showcase of sites, videos from past meetups, um, and that sort of thing. So um, I would urge you to check it out. I also send out a weekly newsletter, um, and that's just stuff that I've picked up on over the week um, that's going on. I've been, I think I've sent out 39 newsletters so far. And before I started it, I didn't think I was going to ever send one out because there wasn't enough stuff. Every week, there's been new stuff to send out. So um, yeah, um, so you can get a, find a link to that on the website as well. And lastly, we also have a Slack where um, some of us go and we chat about stuff that's you know, going on in the space or anything you know, front-end development related. Um, so I want to give a shout out to um, our sponsors tonight. So um, O'Reilly, of course, you know, we're really grateful to have the space here. And O'Reilly came and, uh, and offered to give this to us as, as part of the Velocity Conference. So that's pretty cool. And they've been a sponsor of ours for a long time. And Netlify, our newest sponsor. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Netlify in my talk, very briefly. But um, they are hosting a, a deployment automation platform. And they're a big part of the community in this, in this space. So you know, we're super happy to have them a part of the things that we're doing here. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to talk a little bit about just a, a very brief overview of what's happening in the landscape um, of, of tools and services uh, that make static sites viable. Um, so the first thing is, is that this is the Jamstack meetup. Jamstack stands for JavaScript APIs and Markup. And um, it's kind of significant even in the evolution of this space that we're even um, you know, calling it that because it used to always be static sites. And static sites mean something to people. It means boring. It means that they don't do anything. And that's not really the case. So um, when uh, Matt Billman at, at Netlify kind of came up with this term, and at first I was skeptical, but I, I was having a conversation with um, someone in tech finance. and talking about all of this stuff that we do and how we do it in the stack and how cool it is. And he's like, I love it. I love it. This is great. Does it have a name? And that was the first time I thought, oh, OK, maybe it does need a name. So here we are, you know, um, a few years later um, that we have something to call it that at least doesn't say static. And I think that's significant. So um, and speaking of Netlify, they just got a round of funding from Andreessen Horowitz recently. And um, uh, you know you can read this, but it's it's ridiculous that the web is still clinging on to monolithic backends with their high costs, slower speeds, and huge surface area for attacks in an age of microservices. So that really speaks to a lot of you know where I've come from in the world of traditional CMSs and where we've kind of come to now that you know uh, companies in the space are getting significant funding and um, people in Silicon Valley are recognizing you know the value of this space. <laughs> so, but when, when I got started, so around 2012, 2013, um, it was a very different place. So we kind of started with Jekyll. Jekyll um, isn't the oldest static site generator, but um, Jekyll is um, one of the most prominent static site generators on the scene. Um, that one's been around for nine years ago today, as a matter of fact. And when it started out, it was really you know, a blog-aware static site generator uh, in Ruby. And, the, and that's significant because it did some things for you. It created some predictability around building websites um, in a static manner. So most of the use case at that time was blogs for hackers. That's who it was made for. Uh, but many of us thought that, you know, that that's not the only use case, that there are a lot of websites out there that really don't need the kind of infrastructure that they have today um, and that they should be doing this. But there were some problems to solve, right? So Jekyll solved the problem of building HTML. And it did that pretty nicely um, you know, for, for the time. But, um, but it did 
kind of present a bunch of other problems. And I've kind of broken those down into deployment and hosting, content management, dynamic stuff, complex sites and large sites, which I've kind of grouped together here. Um, so this is where we've evolved from and what the ecosystem looks like. So, you know, with building HTML, you, you'll find, I see people on Twitter saying, oh, well, I can build a static site generator. What's the big deal? You move H, you know, content over here and HTML, you know, is spit out on the other end. But the fact is, is that, you know, once you start doing that in production and for more complex websites and you start doing a lot of stuff, there's a lot of details that you have to think about. And same goes with deployment and hosting. So it's pretty easy to say, okay, well, I've got static HTML and I'm gonna throw it up on a server someplace. But when you really start to get into the details, um, speed of deployment becomes a critical issue, right? Because you've got, say, non-technical people over here adding content to the website, and they expect to see something on the other side. And if it doesn't happen very quickly, they're gonna start thinking something's wrong. And you don't want to ha you know, lower their confidence in this build process. So being able to build on the server to deploy the site in a, in a timely fashion is super important. And then things like error handling and cache invalidation. These are all the sorts of issues that need to be thought about. So in the early days, one of the, uh, you know, a lot of people were deploying to Amazon S3 with the script. Um, and then many of us took the very easy route because we were using Jekyll of, of uh, using GitHub pages. And it was like a super easy deployment process and you had a website and there it was and it was totally easy. But it was very geared towards Jekyll and if you wanted to use anything else, you had to jump through a lot of hoops. The error reporting was very bad, so if something was wrong with your website, you know, build process, um, you might get a cryptic email, um, and you, or you might not know about it. So <clears throat> right now, the space is dominated by uh, Netlify, um, precisely because they've, they've thought through all of the issues, they've solved a lot of problems. Um, you know, I like to say they, they've kind of solved the problems that I didn't even know I had yet. Um, so uh, one, one thing, for instance, is error handling. So I get errors, so if I have a build fail, I get a Slack notification, and you can get an email or whatever works for you, but I get a Slack notification. And with that notification, I can click one button and see the build log to find my error, or I can see the commit where, you know, um, what, what changed. So that works. And then there's other people coming along, like Aerobatic, who are adding layers of services on top of um, hosting and deployment. Um, so, you know, they're doing things like adding uh, very easy plug and play stats, plug and play search, and things like that. So, you know, that whole, s that whole area uh, is really, you know, flourished. And these are just a few of the choices. There are plenty of things that you can do. But I would kind of say, <clears throat> you know, this problem, ha I, I don't, I don't want to use the word solved exactly, but it's in a stable place where you've got a variety of choices and you can do some pretty significant things um, you know, here without worrying too much about it. So now most websites, you're gonna have to have a, a, some sort of an editor. Um, you know, a lot of the sites that we build are based on our markdown and that sort of thing for their content store. But um, um, turns out non-technical people don't really like markdown, as cool as we think it is. Um, and Aside from that, you know, having a uh, having a uh, an, an editor will help you keep your error rate down and that sort of thing. So these are all significant things, and the and the editor plays a role. So I remember a long time ago deploying websites using Prose IO editor, um, and kind of losing sleep over that because it was never really stable, and it was never all that user friendly. But that's what we had at the time. Um, Prose.io was created by the team that built the healthcare.gov website, and, um, which was based on Jekyll. And it was pretty hacky, it was, it was early days, um, but that was kind of the website that kind of brought all of this stuff out into the open. Um, that site took about seven minutes to build, and it, like I said, it was pretty hacky, but you know, it was multilingual, it was, um, you know, there was a lot going on there, very complicated website. So it was pretty admirable that they did it in the first place. And they built this special purpose for that, and then the community kind of took it over from there. But it's never been great, but it's there, it still works. As a matter of fact, I tested it out today, and you can't actually edit on it. It just doesn't do much if you're not in Jekyll, 
and you haven't done all, everything to set it up just properly. Uh, you know, not terribly. I would never use this for non-technical people. So now, um, you know, this area is, I don't know if I'd use the word exploding, but it's really taken off. So we have the forestry editor, which you're going to hear about um, later. But um, there's Netlify CMS, which is open source. That's at early stages, but it's growing quickly. And that was built um, in part for a large uh, seven or 8,000 page um, website that they wanted to move all the way into the Jamstack. And they built Netlify CMS for that. And they're, they're giving it now to the community. And it's really growing and taking off. So um, a few of the other options there. Cloud Cannon was one of the earlier ones um, in this space. There for Jekyll. SiteLeaf is, is a special purpose uh, for Jekyll as well. These are Git-based editors. Uh, Contentful and Datto CMS are two examples of um, API-based editors, and they're very capable. Um, everybody brings something to the table. Either they work specifically with a different tool, or they um, you know, have a different approach and that sort of thing. And we see that time and again here because, you know, a lot of what we're doing in this space is it's about choice. It's about choosing the right tool all along the stack, right? So um, there's a website called headlesscms.org, and there's a whole full list of other ones in there. These are some of the most prominent ones, or these are ones that either I use or my friends use and that sort of thing. So, but between them, you know, that's in a pretty stable place and, and getting better every day. Um, so, um, and I would say, and this isn't just a plug for my friends that are here, but um, I, would, I would tell you that editing a static site, and I, I've worked with a lot of CMSs over the years and that sort of thing, and I would say that editing a static site now, the experience is on par with anything that you'll get um, with the traditional CMS. So it, in terms of uh, the user experience, in terms of what you can do as a developer, creating you know, um, sophisticated uh, content models and that sort of thing. So, And then, so this, is, this gets a little bit trickier because there's a lot of things to cover. And I'm not going to try to cover them all. But I just want to give you a sense of you know, that thing that I was talking about, the fact that static sites aren't static, really, right? Um, um, a tough nut to crack has been search. We did a whole meetup on search um, about a year and a half ago. Um, and it's, it's a really tough thing to do. But even since then, so Lunar has been around for a long time, and there's been some other ones. Lunar is an open source solution that you can build yourself into your site. Um, and it's great. Um, but once you get into more, you know, into either a larger site or a site with, um, you know, um, a more complex queries and that sort of thing. You're going to need something with a back end. And then you can use something like a commercial service, like Algolia, which is fantastic. I just used them on a website. And it was super easy to set up and get going. Um, and it works really well, easy to template the search pages and that sort of thing, easy to you know, kind of understand their, uh, their query model. Um, and, and like I mentioned, Aerobatic is offering um, a search as a plug-in service on, on top of their hosting. Um, things like comments, you know, that's always been a problem, but, um, you know, we've always used stuff like Discus. I personally don't use a lot of comments anymore, but there is, um, like an open source solution, um, called Static Man. In Static Man, you can actually, uh, integrate your user generated content into your site. They, they actually do a pull request that you pull into your site. So, um, things like events. Very easily done. I tend to do them um, as part of my content built into the site, and then just use webhooks to build the site periodically. Um, you know, to keep that up to date. If you needed something, you know, if you had fast changing events or a lot of the different events where you didn't want to build the site over and over again, you might just use you know a JavaScript solution uh, based off of Moment JS, um, and then commerce and and assets. So you know. I think commerce is, is a bit open. Um, I think that uh, Snipcart works really beautifully. I haven't used um, GoCommerce. I don't know if you're, are you working on that at all? It's not, we have it it's for a couple people, but it's not yet. Not quite, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that, that is kind of one of my, my next slide is called The Final Frontier. It's like, feels like one of the big nuts to crack is, is you there. One, you have one of our enterprise users using it. Yeah, in production, yeah. Okay. Right. 
Okay. Um, so, you know, that, that space is getting there, and I predict that there's going to be a lot more uh, happening in this space. And then with asset management and that sort of thing. So these are just um, like CDN type of things, where I use uh, ImageX and Cladinary um, primarily either for the user interface of Cladinary or um, if I just want to be able to add query strings to my uh, assets and that sort of thing. So, um, so basically, you know, when when we started out with, um, you know, the blogs for hackers idea that stuck for a long time, and the feeling was that, um, you know, static sites were for simple brochure sites or static sites were for you know, the blogger where, you know, the only person involved is a developer. But we're increasingly seeing, you know, more sophisticated websites built with, um, uh, with these tools. And, um, you know, particularly where things like, you know, if, if you don't want, you know, the, there's a big story with why healthcare.gov was built on, on um, static was that, that they went from 32 servers down to one. They actually had two, one for, for fallover. Uh, but um, or for backup, but um, you know. So when you have mission critical, where traffic spikes are an issue, where security is an issue, which is so basically everything, you know, this is definitely something that people are using these tools with. Um, so as as a matter of fact, the team that built the HillaryClinton.com site, um, they also built the Obama website. That was another big site that got us started in this space. Um, was that uh, they built that on Jekyll. So, so here we are. Um, the space for the tools that we're building with, um, I mean, it's always been kind of huge. A lot of people are building static site generators, and they build them, you know. So um, there's kind of two things there that are, that are important. One, if you have a language, say you're PHP, there's a static site generator for you, you know. Um, if you're Python, there's a static site generator for you. So there's a lot of different build tools for a lot of different use cases. Um, these are three that I follow very closely, and I feel like these three um, really kind of exemplify where things are, are at and going because you can accomplish so much with them. Um, Hugo, I use um, quite a bit. And um, the great thing about Hugo is, is that you can build, you know, whatever size site that you want, and it can handle it. Um, maybe not in the millions of pages, but I have seen some, you know, talk of very, very large sites. I don't know if that's, you know, we're kind of getting out of the use case there. But I, I have a site right now that um, I'm working on that it's about 5,000 pages, and you know, it's it's not a problem. You couldn't do, you just simply couldn't do it in, uh, in say Jekyll or something like that. Um, Spike is very uh, engineer focused. It's based off a of Webpack. It's all plugins and that sort of thing. And if you have, you know, if you're in JavaScript and you have engineering needs, um, you know, you're going to want to use something like that. And Gatsby is React based. And Gatsby is uh, significant. It's become very popular very quickly um, because you can use any sort of data. I think Spike is pretty much the same way, but you can use any sort of data that you want with it. Um, you can combine markdown files in your build, or you can use a, an outside API or anything like that. Um, and there's a lot of uh, plugins. The world of React is open to you with Gatsby. So, um, you know, so between these tools here, there's not a lot you can't accomplish. Um, you know, and even with, with larger sites, so some people are, solving the large site problem, either with a, a tool like Hugo that, you know, just by brute force can build a lot of pages at a time. It's based on Golang. Um, or um, in the case of Spike, I think for larger sites, they may um, make the core part of the site static and the long tail of the site um, dynamic so that they're not, you know, so they have a balance of build time versus um, the size of the site. So, um, but these are all pretty sophisticated tools, and there's a lot you can do with them. You know, really sophisticated content models, um, and um, you know, because you have so much flexibility, there's just no end of what you can do on the front end. Uh, 